phone. Isabella might see us. Did you bring some? No. I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand it anymore. Be patient. When I'm through, we'll get some. How about Isabella? We had a quarrel. Damn her! She even took what I had. Try to hold out. We'll find some for sure. Please hold out. Please. Go now. Okay. Later. Okay. Goodbye. Isabella, your scar. Thanks. Goodbye. The sign seems to have come off again. Want me to fix it? No. No, not today. You can do it tomorrow.
Listen, Isabella hasn't turned up again. I don't know what to do with that girl. This is the third time. All I suggest is a penalty. Make her pay a fine. It's all very well. The next time she does it, I'm going to fire her. Good night, madame. Good night. Nicole, look at this dress. I wish you'd take care of the things you wear. Tomorrow's the show. Now look at this. Yes, madame, I'm sorry. Yes, you are sorry, especially when it's time to leave. You have absolutely no mind for anything else. What does she expect? I'm not in mourning like her. Poor thing, she hasn't been the same since her husband died. How long were the lights out? About ten minutes. How long has the girl worked for you? About two years. Well. What was she like? She was rather lively. Perhaps lacking discipline. Nothing seriously wrong with her. Did she have uh, many friends? Well, Inspector, I'm afraid I can't be of much help to you. I suggest you ask the two girls who lived with her. Inspector Sylvester, Countess Christina Como, the owner of our salon. Good morning. Good morning. But we've already met, haven't we? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, I think so. After my husband's death. I remember. The car accident. Uh, you certainly can help me. You surely know everything about these girls. Inspector, I don't run a boarding school. When the girls finish here, they, they're free to go and do as they please. Well, um, I'll be in the studio, if you'll excuse me. Please. You say you went outside to repair the metal sign. At what time was it? About seven. Madam Christina complained that the noise got on her nerves. So I went out and I put up the sign again, but I came back inside at once. Mr. Marlin, I demand an explanation. I hardly put my foot inside the gate when these two grabbed a hold of me. Ask the inspector. Inspector? Calm down and tell me why you're here. Allow me. Marquis Richard Morrell of Castle Frank. All right, all right, now answer my question. He's here to see me. He's my fiance. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I live with him. Did you know Isabella? Isabella? You introduced me to her, didn't you? Yes, I can say I knew her. Only slightly, though. Only slightly. Well, you seem to be the only one who cares. They were close friends. The three of you lived together? Yes, me yes. and Teoli. What was she like? Tell me who your friend went out with. I don't know. I don't know. Leave her alone. Everybody knows who Isabella's lover was. 
Who are you? Cesar Lazar. I'm a dress designer. What about the other name? Which? The name of this lover. Haskello, Frank Scalo, the antique dealer. Police, tell me, where's the inspector? In there. Thank you. Would you excuse me for a moment? They confirm. Drugs. I see. Yes, sir. So, what kind of a relationship was there with Isabel and you? We were just friends. Or lovers. Well, I hope it doesn't become scandalized if I tell you. I, I don't believe in permanent, exclusive relationships. I see, I see. Ever seen it before? No, I don't know. What is it? Cocaine. It was found in your friend Isabella's house. Isabella? You knew nothing about it? No. Never mind. However, I must ask you to remain at my disposal. I'll see you later. Turn around. All right, you can go. Hurry. Well, Caesar, what is it? This should have been worn by, by poor Isabella. Yes, of course. Who shall I give it to? Well, let me see. Oh, Peggy, look. Here. Please, no, not me. No, no, please. I saw oh, that. Oh, for heaven's sake, on. stop that. You're going to ruin your makeup. Greta, you model it. Oh, no. I don't think I should wear it. Look, don't be so silly. It carries bad luck, I'm sure. But, girl, someone's got to model it. I'll wear the dress. All right, now, come on. What a cynic. She doesn't believe in anything. That's all right. You can go. Turn around, walk. All right. Wait. There's something missing. The brooch. The brooch goes there. We'll soon put it right. Where is it? Well, it was Isabella's own. Wait a minute. She kept it in one of the boxes. Let's look for it. Here it is. Look at this. Isabella kept a diary. This is a gold mine. Listen, he is a man that awakens such deep feelings in me that afterwards I feel limp, empty. Let me see. I don't think we should. Come, are you crazy? This is hardly the moment. Be off with you. Go on. Go on and change. This, you know, should be handed to the police. I found it, if you don't mind. I would like to give it to the police tomorrow. As you wish.
Hello? Hello, Frank. Why haven't you come? I'm just leaving. But I don't feel well. I understand. Come out here. I've got some... Listen, Frank. I have found a diary. Isabella's diary. A diary? Who else knows? Everyone was looking. I didn't realize that there might be something about you in it. By the way, I said that I would give it to the police tomorrow. Good. That gives us time to look through it. I'll be right over. But you are terribly ill, Frank. Frank, can you hear me? Nicole, I can hardly breathe. If you've got some, I'll feel better. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hurry up, girls. Greta, you're next. Everything all right, Marco? Yes, madam. Good. Well, Caesar, where have you been? Right here. Well, then send them in. Do I have to do everything myself? Nicole? You're wanted on the phone. Me? Yes, you. Yes? Who's speaking? Frank, I can't make it. I feel too bad. You come here, please. I feel like I'm suffocating. How can I come now? Well, I will do my best. I will come right away. All right, hurry up, hurry up. Frank feels bad. He needs me. I'll have to go over. I can't wait anymore. Please, lend me your car. How are you going to get away? We're right in the middle of a show. Who cares? Please give me your keys, but don't let anyone see you. Peggy, what are you doing? Nothing. I was looking for a handkerchief. Be careful. Burglar is sit in the glove compartment right at the back. Sure. Cover me.
Frank. Frank. Frank.
Have a good time, but don't come home too late, please. Good night. Peggy. Marco, why did you get out? I wanted to keep you company till Nicole gets in. Aren't you afraid in there alone? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm awfully tired. I wanted to go to sleep right away. But don't you have to wait till... till Nicole brings the car back, anyway? Please. All right. All right. Come on up. Thanks. I couldn't have gone off with an easy mind, knowing you were alone in this house. You're still here. Good evening, miss. Yes, I've just finished. Miss Nicole hasn't come home. No, she's gone to a party. She'll be home later. She's always mothering us. Well, I'll be running along. Oh, I left the dinner heating on the stove. Oh, uh, if Miss Nicole wants that mess of hers, she only has to warm it up. Thank you, Clarice. Good night. See you tomorrow. Peggy, you just don't seem to understand. Of course I... Peggy, I'm tired of trying to make you understand. Now, I've told you a thousand times. I, I've fallen in love with you. I don't care what happens, but... Calm down, sit here. You see, I'm not well. I know I look like a fool. That's what makes me mad. I'm ill and unlucky. Don't be like that. I understand you. I'm your friend. Come on, cheer up. I'll get yours. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. What's wrong? I just wanted cigarettes. What's wrong? I'll get the cigarettes. You're just untidy my bag. Hello? Good evening, Miss Peggy. This is Inspector Sylvester. I have to ask you something about your car. Your car has been found abandoned. I want to know if it has been stolen. No, I lent it to my friend Nicole. Yes, yes. She was in a hurry. A friend of hers called to say he felt ill. But has something happened? We better talk about this in person. I'll come over and see you right away. Very well, I'll be waiting. What's up? They found my car, but without Nicole. My God, what could have happened? Is he coming here? Yes, he wants to talk to me. Then I better leave. I don't want the police to find me here. Yes, it's best. No one knows you've been here. Yes, for me, and especially for you. I suppose so. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. October 16, I caught Peggy trying to steal $1,000 from my purse. She began to cry and explained how much she needed it. She was pregnant and not able to face the scandal. I felt sorry and I loaned her the money. 
It means that tomorrow I will ask him for two thousand dollars. Miss Peggy.
Good evening. I must ask you to excuse me. There's no time to be visiting. But it's a rather urgent matter. Please, make yourself comfortable. Why did you come here? Charles, you may go, please. Well, then? A little while ago, I... I found Nicole lying in my shop. She's been murdered. Oh, my God. I gone to the salon to pick up Nicole. Remember? I met you there at the time. I looked for her everywhere, but I couldn't find her. Then I went back to my shop. And believe me, I... I've never seen such a mess. You'll pardon me, but why have you come here instead of calling the police? Nicole was my girlfriend. She was murdered in my shop. The police will be accusing me of it. I need an alibi. And you've got to help me. Me? What have I got to do with it? Me? You're just as much to blame for it as I am. We've got to tell the police that we're always together at the salon. Right to the end. I'll back you up. You do the same for me. It's best for both of us. But you're mad. The police have no reason to accuse me of anything. You're the one who's in trouble. You really could have killed her. No, no. Call the police at once. Or I'll have to. All right, go right ahead. But don't forget to tell them about your bad debt. What debts? You signed IOUs to Isabella for a loan of several thousand dollars and couldn't pay the money back. Is it true? Richard, you never told me. Is it true? My God, my God. You, my dear Marquis, don't have a single dollar to your name. You're absolutely flat and afraid of a scandal, which is a good enough reason for, for killing Isabella. At the same time, eliminating the possibilities of her diary being read by the police. Who knows? Perhaps a... Uh, the diary had the dates on which the payments were due. Which diary? I know nothing of it. Don't lie, Richard. I told you Nicole had found Isabel's diary. As you see, we sink or swim together, Mr. Morell. And uh, if you don't want the police meddling around in your private affairs, uh, I suggest you take my advice. Go on back to my shop now and call the inspector. I'll tell him that we were always together. All right? Good evening. There was something about my private life I wanted to know about. You've got to believe me. I burned it. <laughs> <laughs>
How do you think this girl got in here? She had a key. How come? I'd given it to her. She used to come and see me now and then. Her too. Inspector, please don't think that I... Nicole was the reason why I left Isabella. And how many other people had a key to your door? No one else, except myself, naturally. Naturally. Did you take drugs with her, too? Why, what do you mean, Inspector? Come, 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 Scarlo. Don't try to fool me. You've got the habit. It's written all over your face. If you like, I'll even tell you where you get the stuff. And, uh, as for the girls who, who shall we say, keep you company, they either try to get you to drop the habit, like Isabella, or join you in it, like this one, for example. All right. Perhaps. But that doesn't make me a murderer. Besides, I... I've got an alibi. I was with... I haven't asked you for the time being. We'll go on with it later. When? In my office. Come along. Yes. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Wait a minute. I wrote down the first number. Uh, 453. You can see. Did you see a man or a woman? A man, I am sure. He's dressed in black, but he seemed to not have a face. Perhaps he was wearing a mask. Perhaps. I don't know. I was distracted by the horn. Which horn? The horn of this car, Inspector. I know it. I've serviced it. It blew for a time, and then it stopped. Has this car got a burglar alarm, Sergeant? Yes, it's here, in the glove compartment. How long did it blow? I don't know. I told you. It wasn't for long. This long? <coughs> Stop. Not longer than that. If you don't know where it is, it would take quite a while to find it. We've wasted enough time on this. Let's go to the office. Come in, please. Thank you. Look at them carefully. Have you ever seen any of them in Miss Peggy's car? Good morning, Mr. Morland. Morning, Clarice. Have you seen him in the car? Certainly she's seen me before in the car on more than one occasion. What's yes. so strange about that? And who said there was? Let's continue. Him. I've seen him in the car. Of course she's seen me. What does it prove? This is all so ridiculous. Be quiet. You didn't see only me, did you? Open your eyes, you idiot. Look at him. Haven't you ever seen him? Inspector, do you only want to know if I saw them in the car? Why? Because this gentleman came into the flat with Miss Peggy last night. We're beginning to see the light now. You swine. What are you getting at? You want to ruin me? 
I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Why don't you confess? Confess! Confess! You're the murderer! Inspector, look at his face! He hates women! Look at him! He's the killer, I tell you! He's the killer! He killed them all because he couldn't go with any of them! Why didn't you tell the inspector that your wife left you for that very reason? My pills! My pills! Try to hold him still. He could hurt himself. Take him to the hospital. Didn't any of you know he was an epileptic? No, I didn't. You can go home now. Goodbye, Clarice. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to stay here, Mr. Morin. You too, Mr. Lazar. What do you mean, stay here? I mean I shall have warrants made out for your arrest. Uh, pardon me, Inspector. What exactly is the reason behind this? Miss Nicole's murderer had used Peggy's car on other occasions. That's why he knew exactly where the burglar alarm was hidden. Can I go now? And me? No. You both stay, too. But that's ridiculous. I've got an alibi. I... The Marquis has confirmed it. It's true. We were together. Oh, don't worry. I haven't forgotten it. You both were at his house till 11 o'clock, while Miss Nicole was murdered at 10. So what do you want with us? Well, when I called Miss Peggy to say that I had found her car, it was about 11.30. About 15 minutes later, I was at her apartment. She wasn't there. And her apartment had been ransacked. Someone could have killed her and hidden her body in the meantime. And as far as that goes, gentlemen, your alibi isn't really worth much. Nine o'clock. Why must we sit in the dark? As if we weren't scared enough already. Do what you want, but please try to keep calm. How are we supposed to keep calm? Doesn't what's happening bother you? I'm frightened, too. Don't think I'm not. But getting hysterical doesn't help. If only the men would come back. We're all women left alone. Hello. Oh, Mr. Molan, at last. What happened? I mean, on what grounds? I see. All right. All right. Of course. All right, don't worry. Goodbye. They are holding all five of them. But why? The police obviously think one of them is the murderer. I thought so. Madam, please, can we go? Oh. Oh, yes, yes, go. Goodbye. Good night. Good night, madame. How I envy them. They live together. At least they keep each other company. I must go, madam. All right. Wait. Listen, why don't you come home and sleep with me? What? 
I live a few yards from here. And you want me to come out into the countryside? Then I could come and stay at your place. No, I'm sorry, but I'd rather be alone. Anyway, you'd be even more afraid at my house. Well, aren't you afraid? Isabella and Peggy lived with you. Isabella's been killed, and Peggy... Yes, I know. But I don't think anything would happen tonight. All the men are under arrest. And I'm sure the murderer is one of them. Goodbye, madame. Good night. Madame, I'm not going home. I'll sleep here. No, you won't, dear. You're going home just like the others. Good night. I'm all alone. I live out in the country, not here in town. No, Greta, listen to me. Tomorrow we have a very hard day ahead of us. The show must go on, you know. Now, look. Isabella and Nicole were mixed up in some ugly business that has nothing to do with the rest of us. So we have nothing to be afraid of, do you understand? Go now. Don't worry. Thank you. Good night, madam. Good night. <laughs> Evening, Miss. The Marquis rang to say he'd be detained in town by an engagement. I know. I'll dine alone. Immediately, Miss.
Hello. Hello. Your tea, miss. Just a moment, please. All right, Charles. I'll take care of the rest. Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, oh. 
Look at how the murderer tortured her. He must have used a red hot poker. He must have been a madman. Or a sex maniac in homicidal fury. Against beautiful women. Yes. Perhaps the sight of beauty makes him lose control of himself and kill. We'll have to start all over again. Excuse me, sir. If you want to see the footprints we found in the garden, we're ready now. Let's look at those footprints. The killer drove up to here. The footprints show that he started here, got out and walked up the embankment to the farm. They match the footprints we found at Morland's villa. Are you sure? Absolutely. We have the proof in the plaster cast. I could have sworn that the murderer was one of the five suspects we have. Do we have to let them go? Of course. This time they've got a really foolproof alibi. <laughs> I gave it to them. Morel Richard. That's me. You want to check it? Of course I'll check it. Max Morlan. <laughs> Yes, come in. Mr. Morland, I would like to speak to you for a moment. Yes, darling, come in. Mr. Morland, I'm a calm person. I'm not nervous. But the thought that a sex maniac is prowling around your fashion house, well, I don't like it. I'd like to take a short holiday. I have already booked a flight to Paris for tomorrow. To Paris? Very well, Tilly. Thank you. By the way, uh, you still live with the Countess? Yes, why? Oh, nothing. Except a short while ago while the Count was alive. I visited there frequently. Lovely place. You know, from the terrace you can see all of Rome. Yes, I'd rather see the roofs of Paris at the moment. I understand. Have a nice time. Bye-bye. Goodbye.
I burnt Peggy's clothes. There's nothing left to show that she was here. Then I had to do something else. I had to get her out of here. To give you an alibi. And then I killed Greta. Perfect. Perfectly awful. I don't know how I did it. As if it wasn't bad enough to find Isabella in the wardrobe. Oh, I nearly fainted. I wanted to tell you about it, but I couldn't. By the way, how did you manage to carry Peggy to Morrell's farm? Well, I... I didn't... I... somehow got her into the car. And Greta did the rest. Why did you pick on Greta? Well, uh, she was alone in the house, that's why. Well done. The police think it's the work of a sex maniac. First, second, third, fourth. Stop it. <laughs> oh, oh, darling, darling, what's the matter? Kiss me. What's the matter, darling? What a mess. All because of that idiot, that witch, Isabella. The blackmail. Money she wanted. Money, money, money. Too much money. She should have realized when she found out about... that my husband's death wasn't an accident. That it was dangerous and unwise to ask for that money. But no, no, no. The more that we would give her, the more she wanted. She asked for it, she did. She was on top of it. Too hard, my darling. She squeezed too hard. Mm. And the diary. That damn diary. If it hadn't been for that damn diary. <laughs> ah. It is done now. And we have nothing to worry about, my darling. Nothing to worry about. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. We'll never have any peace. Until we've given the police their murderer. Peace? Ha, ha, ha. Chris, listen to me. We'll never get away with it. Unless they find the maniac they're looking for. Never. Until they do, they'll keep their eye on us. You must remember, all the victims worked for us, but while they have no evidence against us, the whole thing is blown sky high. The press, the scandal, the salon being closed down. We've got to find a way out. What are we going to do? Uh, I know, darling. We're going to fly to the moon. We've got to act again, one more time. You've got to do it. Oh, no. Yes. I'm still being shadowed. Now, don't worry, darling. We'll find an alibi for you. Now, don't worry. Oh, no, Max, no. You can't ask me to do a thing like that. I can't do it. I can't do it, you know. You've done it before. I've done it before. I've done it before, but that was different, you know. Because you were in danger, I had to do it. Do it because, unless I hadn't done it, everything would have been lost forever. <sighs> Only my love for you gave me the strength. But it was horrible. Horrible! <laughs> now listen to me, you little idiot. Listen, there's more danger now than even before. More! If you don't listen to me, everything, this horrible nightmare, everything, useless. Useless! <laughs>
Are you... Are you surprised to see me alive, Max, my love? Sure. Your plan was ingenious. The shop awning broke my fall. Please. Silent. I know what you planned to say. That you didn't do it. But I know you did. I know you did. Because you knew that I would be passing by the ledge if there was any danger, remember? Remember you told me to? You told me to? Oh, please, you must listen to me. You must listen. Yes. Yes, you had an ingenious plan. If the police found my body, everything would have been solved. Everything. And you would have been free. Now I understand why we had to get married. In secret. In such a hurry. You were so much in love. So much in love. Yes. But with my house. The apartment. The salon. The money. You loved everything I had. Everything. But me. Chris, listen to me. You're wrong, my darling. I want you. I love you. It's been a terrible shock for you, my darling. Terrible. Christina, I love you. <laughs> to you, it was an accident. Trust me. Very soon, my darling. We'll go away together. Just the two of us, like we always planned. I want inspector. Till next. 